A herd of horses met a lonely, crying boy on the road, but what happened after that made all the locals burst into tears. A little boy named Jake was sitting on the empty road, crying nonstop. His face was covered with dust, and his clothes were old and torn in some places. The cold wind was biting his skin, making his loneliness even harder to bear. Endless fields stretched around him, and with every minute, fear gripped Jake's heart more and more. He called loudly for his parents, but his voice was lost in the evening silence. The wind rustled the grass and carried sounds that reminded him that night was coming. The road was empty, and no one came to help him. Jake was completely confused and didn't know what to do next. Suddenly, he noticed a small herd of horses in the distance. At first, they looked like tiny dots on the horizon, but the animals quickly got closer to Jake. The boy held his breath, hoping that these majestic creatures would not harm him. His heart was pounding in his chest as he saw their shapes getting bigger. Jake instinctively stepped aside, clenching his fists in fear and tension but the horses slowed down and carefully approached the boy. Their ears were pricked, and they watched him closely. The air was filled with silence, broken only by the sound of their breathing. One bay mare quietly snorted and slowly stepped forward. Her big brown eyes looked calm and wise. As she came closer, she gently touched the boy with her soft nose. Jake held his breath, watching her every move. His fear slowly turned into curiosity. He reached out his hand and carefully stroked the mare's muzzle. His fingers glided over her smooth coat, allowing Jake to forget everything for a moment. Except for this magical instant, the horses surrounded Jake in a tight circle, as if protecting him from any possible danger. One of the horses softly neighed, and the sound echoed through the night, making Jake's heart beat even faster. The surprised boy stood in the center of this living circle, feeling, for the first time, a sense of protection he had never known before coming from these horses. As darkness fell, the temperature dropped sharply. The cold penetrated to his bones, and each breath became harder to take. The horses began to move, and although Jake was freezing, he followed them because he had nowhere else to go. His legs were shaking from exhaustion and cold, but he stubbornly kept walking. He stumbled over stones and roots, and at some point, he felt like he couldn't take another step. The horses, as if sensing his weakness, moved slowly ahead, allowing him to catch up. They led him to a small old barn, which stood surrounded by tall trees. Jake barely made it out in the dusk. The boards of the barn were worn by time, and the wind made the building creak as if it were alive. Inside, it was dark and smelled of old hay. Jake found a pile of hay and collapsed onto it, feeling his frozen body finally begin to relax. He curled up into a ball, burying himself deeper into the hay, trying hard to get warm. The horses settled down beside him, their soft snorts and breathing soothing him. But the fear of being alone still wouldn't leave Jake. He couldn't sleep for a long time, listening to every rustle. It seemed as if every sound in the dark was a hidden threat, and only the horses nearby gave him a sense of safety. Early in the morning, the sound of footsteps woke Jake up. The boy immediately opened his eyes, his heart beating anxiously again. It was an elderly farmer named John Anderson who had come to check on his horses. Seeing the small figure among the animals, he stopped in surprise. What the heck, John muttered, staring at the boy, who was peacefully sleeping on the hay next to the horses. The farmer carefully approached and bent over Jake, lightly touching him on the shoulder. The boy flinched and his eyes filled with fear but when he saw the kind eyes of the old man, he felt relieved. John noticed how Jake's little hands were trembling from the cold and fear. Then the farmer took the boy's hand, saying, it's okay, kid, you're safe now. Jake looked at him with disbelief, his lips quivering, but John's words sounded warm and sincere. John took Jake to his home, where he gave him a warm blanket and fed him hot soup. The farmer listened with surprise as Jake told him that his own parents had left him on the side of the road, promising to return soon, but they never came back. John looked at him with sadness in his eyes and decided that for now, he would take care of the abandoned boy. The next morning, the farmer took Jake to the local clinic, where Dr. Sarah Thompson examined him and found that the boy was severely malnourished and suffering from infections caused by the poor care of his wounds. Jake gritted his teeth as the doctor treated his wounds, but he didn't make a sound. His face turned pale from the pain, but he held on, 
refusing to show any weakness. He needs a lot of rest and good nutrition, Dr. Thompson said seriously, looking at John. John nodded, promising to do everything possible for the boy. He noticed that Jake's eyes looked clearer, but there were still traces of the suffering he had gone through. Several weeks passed, and Jake slowly began to recover. He grew attached to the horses, especially to the bay mare named Star. Every morning he went out to her and sat nearby, watching her graceful, smooth movements. Sometimes Jake talked to her about his fears, as if she could understand him. John immediately noticed how much the boy liked the horses, and he believed that they would help Jake recover faster and regain his strength. Star's presence helped Jake cope with the loneliness and fears that still haunted him every night. He still sometimes woke up from nightmares, but when he felt the warm breath of the horses nearby, he would fall back to sleep. The time spent with the horses became a real salvation for the boy. He often stroked their soft necks and manes, feeling how his worries gradually faded away, replaced by peace and joy. The horses became more than just animals to Jake. They became his support in a world that had suddenly turned its back on him. Word of Jake quickly spread through the town, and many local residents began offering their help. The Wilson family brought clothes, and Mrs. Green, a former teacher, started working with Jake to help him catch up on his schoolwork. But even though he was surrounded by attention and care, Jake still sometimes woke up from nightmares, where he was once again alone on that empty road, crying loudly, but no one came to help him. One night, the boy woke up with a scream, and John immediately rushed to him. The boy was sobbing, hiding under the blanket, and John sat next to him, put his arm around his shoulders, and whispered softly, You're not alone anymore, Jake. I'm here with you. In that moment, Jake slowly began to believe that this kind man really would never abandon him. However, the peaceful life of the farmer and his unusual guest was soon disrupted. One morning, Jake's real parents showed up at John's doorstep with a police officer. They stood on the porch, looking exhausted and worn out. Jake froze when he recognized them. Tears welled up in his eyes as he saw his mother running towards him, crying. Jake, honey, we've been looking for you for so long. His father stood beside her, wiping tears from his eyes. They told the police officer and John that they had been forced to leave Jake on the road because they had lost their home and money. The parents were completely desperate, but they hoped that someone would take pity on their son and take better care of him than they could. After some time, they regretted their cruel decision and started searching for their son as soon as they fixed their financial situation. Jake listened carefully to what his mom and dad were saying, barely moving and looking at his parents with obvious disbelief. A storm of emotions arose in his soul, relief, anger, and confusion. Jake stood between his parents and John, not knowing what to do. His heart was torn by conflicting feelings. He still loved his parents, but now he had found a new home with John and the horses who had become his best friends. Suddenly, the boy felt Star gently touch his shoulder with her nose, as if reminding him that she would always be by his side. John also didn't believe in the good intentions of Jake's parents, who had so cruelly abandoned him alone on the deserted road. Because of this, a custody case over Jake soon began. In court, the boy told the judge how the horses found him on the road, how John took care of him, and how the local residents welcomed him warmly and helped him. The boy's voice shook when he talked about Star, who had become much more than just a kind horse to him. Jake said that he couldn't leave her because she had saved him not only physically, but also emotionally. The boy looked straight at the judge, and in his eyes, there was a determination to not let anyone take away what he had found with this kind farmer and his horses. The judge listened carefully and then decided to visit John's farm in person to see everything with her own eyes. When the judge arrived at the farm and saw Jake spending time with the horses, her heart softened. She watched as Star came up to the boy and gently nudged him with her nose while he stroked her muzzle and smiled happily. It was a touching sight and the judge realized that their bond was incredibly deep. The other horses stood around Jake just as they had the first time when they surrounded him on the road, protecting the lonely boy. These animals seemed to understand that he was one of them and didn't allow anyone to come too close if it could harm him. Returning to the courtroom, the judge announced her decision. Jake would stay with John, but his parents would be allowed regular visits with their son. 
Jake was very happy that he could stay with John and the horses, but he was also glad that he could still see his parents sometimes. Slowly, Jake's life began to get back on track. He lived with John on the farm, but his parents visited regularly and tried to be part of his life. With each passing day, Jake became more confident and stronger. The nightmares troubled him less and less, and he increasingly enjoyed his life on the farm. Now sitting in the evenings on the porch, the boy often looked at the setting sun and felt that he had finally found his true home. 